All right, guys, good boy 32 here. Let me make sure my microphone is on and we're operating. All right, three, two, one. All right, guys, good boy 32 here, check it out. So last week I did a video review on uh, just basically the unboxing of this guy right here. This is the Ballistic Advantage. This is their uh, 223 Wild 1 and 8 Twist 416R stainless steel, high pressure man, magnetically pressure tested premium barrel. And when I stuck the boroscope under into it, uh, I think we were all pretty much going, wow, that's kind of crazy. But these are the reasons why people that if you are, you have a brand new barrel, a lot of times you really want to do is you want to break that thing in properly because there are a lot of things in there. So I really thought it was a little bit unfair to uh, take this for face value. But what I want to do now is I want to clean show you again what it looks like. I've cleaned my boroscope up really, really good. So let's go ahead and stick it on in there. <laughs> so in any case, let's take a look at this thing. Uh, let me hit the record button. All right. Okay, so now we're recording and we're going to go ahead and take this thing in here. And now I, again, this is the before. I have not done anything to this barrel. I haven't put any kind of a cloth or any kind of swab through it, but I just want to get a good look at this thing. All right, so there's the lands as they enter into the barrel. And as you can see, that's carbon, and I'm pretty sure that they test fired this thing. And a lot of guys responded that they do a high pressure uh, test firing. I don't know what that means, but in any case, one of the things that concerned me was not necessarily that, because what we're going to do is I'm going to take this guy right here. This is the uh, Bortec Ink Carbon Remover, as well as the Bortec Ink Copper Remover, all of which is biodegradable. Uh, this does not have any ammonia in it, so it doesn't harm your barrel over time as you continue to put that in there. One of the gentlemen that I, I have a lot of respect for made a comment on that, uh, but uh, just to let everybody know, that is what it is. So we're going to follow these things up. The biggest thing that I had concerns with was what appeared to be rust or uh, talking to some barrel experts as you can see on the right hand side as I bring that in uh, it looks or appears like a high rust and it, it's actually I don't know if it's gotten even worse over the time but in any case that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and wow look at that we're gonna clean this barrel out as best we can and then we're gonna do an after shot of it so in any case I, I hope that uh, with some good swabbing of this, we'll get rid of that carbon. Uh, we'll go ahead and try to treat it and get rid of that rust. The uh, copper remover does have some rust preventative in it. My father used to be a, a chemical engineer for Castrol. I used to hear about all the rust preventatives because he was in the cutting and grinding industry. But look at that. And I, I, I almost think that that's gotten worse over the time. That looks like cancer. In any case, let's go ahead and take it out to the end of the barrel real quick. And again, I have not reached out to uh, Ballistic Advantage about this thing. Um, one of the things, like, like I said, I want to clean it very, very well and see what's going on with this thing. Let's follow that land all the way back. And uh, we'll do that. Now, that's about it. I mean, that's all we got to talk about. But uh, as far as the lands go, they're really not, I don't have any complaints there. Uh, Again, we can look at the uh, interior. You can tell that they did fire it because there is some uh, residue on the, uh, the uh, downstream uh, portion of that, uh, what do you call that, the gas port. All right, so let's go ahead and clean this bad boy up and see the after effect. Stand by. Okay, so real quickly, I wanted to uh, run this mirror, the uh, bore scope through. I've run two passes with the, uh, the carbon remover. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just letting that stuff soak in there. But I just wanted to see if there was an immediate result. So now you see the shininess, that's gonna go away when we run a dry patch through it. But yeah, see how it's removing the carbon from those grooves. You can see the bubbles from that carbon remover. Oh yeah, we got some good bubbles there. <laughs> All right, I wanna keep that lens clean, so let's just bring it on out. All right, so now what I've done is we pretty much finished up with the carbon remover, and I want to run it through it. I've done the carbon remover, and we've run some dry patches to it. It's, I've uh, done some inner kind of scoping it, and it looks pretty decent. 
Uh, but what we're going to have to do is, and when we say bringing a barrel in and gaining that copper equilibrium, this barrel is going to need a lot of that. Because uh, what I'm seeing now in the lands, if you can see that right there, and we'll get a little bit more, uh, a better look at it when we do the copper remover. But those grooves right there are all going to have to be filled with copper in order for this thing to really be accurate. Well, hell, I don't know. It could be as accurate as I'll get out. I've seen stuff that's clean and not come out accurate. But look at that. Uh, so whatever they shot this thing with, they really put some grooves into those lands. Look at that right there. And uh, it's microscopic, but you can see where the rust was or whatever that was. It's gone now. Let's get on down here. A little further we'll just follow there's that one particular section i keep looking at and that's wild looking as you can see we still have some copper residue in there we'll go ahead and get that out in a second what the hell is that thing uh moving forward we've got pretty much all the rust out of it or at least what appeared to be rust i'd like for somebody to just chime in on that if you can that'd be really really cool but again, like I said, what I wanted to do was give this barrel a second chance. I didn't want to just run out. But you can see where that, that corrosion is. Let's keep moving forward. But look at all that. So let's go ahead and we're going to get the copper remover and uh, get that out of there. And then uh, one of these days we'll get this thing mounted to an upper receiver and get some rounds down range for it but uh yeah let's go ahead and get the copper remover in there and see how that looks and uh, we'll go from there here we go all right guys real quickly we've got about halfway through our process for the um copper removal you can see all these patches right here that that stuff is just it's caked in there but in any case uh we're gonna keep moving with this thing but i wanted to give you a real quick shot of what this looked like on the inside so let's do this here we go so this is about halfway through the cleaning process we're looking pretty good up here if you just take a look at one of these lands uh but it's uh this thing's got a lot of copper in it and not not that i'm you know you never know until you get it out there you put some rounds through it and i'm really looking forward to shooting this thing but uh we got a lot of work in order to get it clean and i'm doing this because i just want to see what we've got now if we get on down about the last three quarters of the barrel we're going to start running into some copper but i mean not not that anything that can't be is not bad but i just want to show you guys the exist the condition of this thing now look at that some people would say that's beautiful but with the corrosion marks that's the one thing that uh we're, I got a little bit of concern about just from the general purpose of the, of the rifle but once we get the uh, copper build up in there uh, throw some uh, just some 55 grain uh, boat tail rounds through it. We should be halfway decent, but uh, we'll get this thing going. I'm gonna throw the brush into it. Yeah, I saw that. What was that? That was an alien inside the barrel. Let's check out the uh, gas port. I want to see if the gas port is in the landing or not, and we'll find out real, real quickly here. One of the gentlemen on the show uh, made a comment about the gas port being in the lands. This one appears to be splitting the difference. The, the space between the landings and the groove, that thing is right in the groove, as you can see. But uh, And that shouldn't have hardly any effect. Now, that will smooth out once we get a couple more rounds through it. But what we'll do is uh, get this thing rocking and rolling. Let's see if I can do something here. And y'all can't see my, wait a minute, there's my eyeball. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Keep going. That's all we can do. All right, guys, so here we are, man. I have gone through swab after swab after swab, and I, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to get enough of the copper out of there for it to really come clean. But, well, let's just take a look at the interiors. It is clean enough that I think I'm going to be able to run a, a round down range with it without fear of it. Uh, causing damage in the uh, rifle but uh, yeah there's just a lot of copper buildup 
The lands are pretty smooth. There is the corrosion from it, I think will fill up nicely with uh, some of the copper once we get some uh, rounds going down range. But you can see that's this is a dry patch. This barrel's dry now. And uh, it's come very close to being right where I need it to be. But still, um, just the areas where you can see where the corrosion was from where that uh, rust is. And that's typical uh, of what a high iron content in the stainless steel. So that's one of the things that uh, I might have to reach out and ask these people about and what's going on here. And if they can explain this to me, it would be really cool. Um, because this, these Ballistic Advantage, this is a premium barrel. And I would expect that I wouldn't be running into a lot of this stuff that I'm seeing right now. But uh, the copper uh, is in there. I can't get it out. I'm not really concerned about it. But I just what I wanted to do, the goal of this video was because I don't think I gave the, the barrel a fair shake. Uh, the first round, go around. But as you can see, really smooth, but the corrosion in there, uh, you guys who are barrel experts, if you could just give me a quick synopsis of what your thoughts are on this. Like I said, I'm not a professional, but I do know what a good looking interior of a barrel is supposed to look like. So with that being said, we've got a couple other barrels we're getting ready to do. Uh, another comparison series, uh, budget versus elite and where we're going to be taking a proof research barrel as well as the Bear Creek Arsenal barrel and uh, comparing the two. But yeah, look at the copper buildup right there. There's just nothing I can do to get that out of there. I'm not really concerned about getting it out, but I was trying to get this barrel to come clean and become a spick and span as perfect as it gets. But yeah, the last one third of that barrel is... Uh, it's got a lot of copper in it, which is good. You know, I don't care. So anyway, let's take a look real quickly at the... Uh, what do you call it? Where's my gas port? There you are. You can see how clean it's got. So anyway, guys, that's it. That is the... Uh, this is the... What do you call this? Ballistic Advantage Premium Barrel 223 Wild. I want to order. I wanted to order about three more of these things because I'm trying to do a build series down the road where I'm building three identical battle rifles with uh, the most efficient and cost-effective uh, equipment and materials that I can. So with that being said, let me know what your thoughts are down below. This is the uh, again Ballistic Advantage Premium Barrel. It's Code Boy 32. Support red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women in uniform. 24/7 for freedom. Freedom is not free. I'm out of here. Y'all be good.